What's your initial reaction to the results we're seeing so far tonight? I think coronavirus plays very well for Joe Biden. I think in financial markets, we talk about how in fragile moments, people look for a flight to quality. Mm -hmm. And I think Joe Biden represents, a, frankly, a pretty tried and tested um, candidate. And I think perhaps at the margin, people are less inclined to um, make a protest vote, make a uh, radical vote uh, when, when they feel fragile and worried about um, global affairs and, and about their, their health. So you've done business in Europe, you've done business in Asia as well as in New York. Do you have any sense of how international businessmen respond to Joe Biden versus Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump for that matter? Well, I think there's grudging respect for Trump as a strong man in China. We see that. But, but, but overall, um, uh, clearly, uh, Biden is presenting himself as an extension of the Obama administration. And, and globally, we see business people really hankering back to that time when you know, it was a safer, more predictable, calmer environment, an environment of global engagement rather than um, bilateral, combative uh, type uh, uh, interactions. Yeah, I mean, so far, I don't, we haven't seen the market react much to the election. It's, it's almost as if, you know, we will get these candidates. But the one thing that does seem to strike fear is that idea of a Bernie Sanders at the head of the Democratic ticket. Is that something that you're hearing, that that would be a bridge too far for many investors? Uh, absolutely. I think people want to see the United States as a leader, uh, as, a, as an economic pioneer, as the country that basically leads... Uh, the whole world uh, making progress in, in the economy. And, and definitely Sanders is seen as a somewhat uh, radical option, and that scares people. Well, I, I think one of the things I was curious about, because you mentioned it earlier about this consistency issue with the current administration. Yes. I was just in the Middle East last week, and I heard that over and over from leaders in the Middle East, that what they would love is just a consistent American policy. Mm -hmm. That being said, we've had a very good prosperous three years under the Trump administration, yes. really continuing the uh, good growth rates that we've had under the Obama administration. Has it really mattered where we've gone internationally at I this think, point? I think generally people have been happy with what they've seen uh, from the U.S. economy, but that's different from the, being happy with what they've seen from, from Mr. Trump and his policies towards different countries. I think people are concerned that the trade war, uh, there's a price to be paid. And there was concern about that before coronavirus, but I think particularly given uh, the, the prevalence, the you know, very rapid spread of coronavirus globally, I think people really want to see engagement uh, and diplomacy rather than, rather than a fight. Well, now, there's, a, a, there's one guy running uh, who's not to be left out of the debate, Mike Bloomberg, right. who has relationships all over the world, who has a reputation on uh, global economic matters. Sure. Uh, what is your sense of the public's uh, uh, future uh, perspective about Mike's candidacy? I, I talk to CEOs. I talk to investment bankers. They love Mike Bloomberg. Um, but, but, but they see Biden as, as, as safe and dependable, too. Biden may be less exciting, uh, may be less of a businessman, obviously, but uh, both of those candidates are acceptable, whereas, frankly speaking, Sanders is much more worrying. Uh, so Mike Bloomberg, of course, is the founder and majority shareholder of Bloomberg LP. We right. have to say that, our parent company. Right. That's the only reason I bring him up constantly. So <laughs> No, no, that's <laughs> not. No, no he's, he's, part, he's an important part of the story tonight. You, ha you have to cover Mike Bloomberg, no question about it. But is it too soon to get a read from the world on U.S. leadership with respect to coronavirus? You've referred to it a couple of times. Is it too soon? Is it perceived that President Trump is doing the things he needs to do as leader of the United States? I, I'm afraid to say, uh, and I say this carefully, the president of the, the U.S. is seen as sometimes a bit reckless and a bit impe impetuous in his actions uh, in, in lots of different spheres. And I think that does worry people. Um, oddly, we're seeing in, in China and the rest of Asia, they're actually a bit more calm about coronavirus. They're beginning to look beyond coronavirus mm. in their own countries. And my colleagues in China are talking about going back to work and talking about factories restarting. If you see the uh, uh, stock markets in, in, in Asia today, actually relatively less volatile uh, than, than, than we've seen in the West. So it seems like people are looking to a potential Western outbreak of coronavirus as, as being maybe more frightening than coronavirus in Asia, amazingly. Do you yes. think there's a lessons learned in China versus uh, where we're right now just getting into the coronavirus mm. perspective? They're sort of hopefully coming out of it. 
Um, uh, is there, are there going to be new policies that we see come out of Asia on this? Bl bluntly speaking, I'm not sure they are coming out of it. I think that uh, Chinese government uh, propaganda has been very effective in convincing the public that the country has the, uh, the, the, the virus under control. But certainly people are beginning to look beyond it. I think there is a change. I think that people will be more careful about travel. And we're seeing a very dramatic movement in investor interest towards online businesses, yeah. online education. Uh, you know, it's not a great time to be an investor in theme parks or, or hotels or, or airlines. And, and, and probably that's going to persist.